So recently, Google Marketing Live, which is Google's annual marketing technology conference, happened, and it brings with it a ton of new updates for Google Ads advertisers. As you can imagine, with this kind of event, there are going to be big announcements and some very small minor announcements that won't really affect anything. So what I'm going to do today is explain to you the five most important announcements you need to be aware of that are going to impact your business the most. And if you're a freelancer or an agency, what's going to impact your clients' businesses the most? The last update I'll cover on this video is very, very crucial because it pertains to the new campaign setting for search campaigns known as AI Max, which is a huge change in how Google sees search campaigns. So stick around to the end of the video because it's going to get very, very interesting. So for the first update, it's all about Performance Max and Google has made around 90 improvements to the Performance Max campaign type in terms of improving how it bids and how effective it is, which has led, as they say, to a 10% increase in conversions, which is interesting, but it's important to remember that Google will always massage the figures to make them look better. Notice how they didn't mention what the cost of those conversions were in terms of that additional 10%, because I'm guessing they would have been some pretty expensive conversions compared to what was being achieved before. Getting more quantity sometimes comes at the cost of paying more per conversion. Never forget that. But there was one really interesting update from the world of Performance Max, which was, of course, Google is now going to provide channel level reporting. As you know, on Performance Max, you are covering all of Google's network, including search, display, the discovery pane, Gmail, YouTube, everything. So it's really important to know where your money is going and what the results of those different networks are. So Google is going to provide this. They're going to give us that channel level reporting, but I'm going to guess they're not going to give us the opportunity to opt out of specific underperforming channels. It's going to give us the data, but not give us the option to opt out. I'd imagine Imagine. Maybe I'm wrong, but who knows? I think that's probably what the launch of this feature is going to look like. So what does this change for you and your campaigns? Should you even run Performance Max? Well, nothing changes fundamentally. Even if Google says they've improved the product with 90 changes, leading to 10% more conversions reported, nothing changes for you or your business. You need to run Performance Max if the need is there. If you're an e-commerce business, Performance Max can make a lot of sense. If you have a large product portfolio running a very diversified campaign and want to leverage smart bidding in the best way, it's a great campaign type. However, if you're running on a lead gen situation, start with search. Always start with search if you're doing lead gen, and then you can expand into Performance Max if there is a need to generate more leads with incremental leads on top of the core search leads you're getting. Use it as a way to increase when you hit a ceiling in search. You don't have to start with Pmax. So with these updates, okay, they're good, but fundamentally nothing changes for your campaigns. So up next, we have another update called Smart Bidding Exploration, which is actually quite interesting, but let's get into it. So the way that Smart Bidding Exploration works is Google uses what is known as a flexible ROAS target. Now, typically in a campaign when using ROAS, you set your ROAS target and Google will try and achieve that target and bid in line with that target. With a flexible ROAS target, what you're asking Google to do is go for a target, but give it some variance to potentially get a lower ROAS based on a percentage. So say for example, you set your ROAS at 500%, you can say to Google, I want to use a flexible target and I'll allow you to go 30% above that 500% or 30% below that 500% where there could be more conversions. Now, of course, because of the nature of this functionality, it's always going to be below. You're always going to give up some of your ROAS target negatively in order for Google to find more conversions. But it's giving you a choice to say, okay, let's use a bit of variance. If there are additional sales that can be gained, let them get up, let, let Google bid for those and get those sales. So if we want to talk about the expected outcome of this change, well, in my mind, it will lead to potentially more conversions in your account, but some of those conversions will come at a reduced ROAS because Google is going to go above and beyond where you're currently showing to go beyond your target to find more sales, but the cost of those sales will likely be higher because otherwise they'll just get those sales within your target. A while ago I mentioned that Google only cares about increasing volume but don't really care about efficiency. All of their changes now you're going to see are going to link together cost increases in your account and increased conversion volume. They don't like efficiency. They'd rather play with efficiency like this example I just explained and try and get you to spend a bit more money. Yes, you'll get more sales, but what are the cost of those sales? You need to do what's important and right for your accounts and forget Google's tactic of trying to get you to spend more, get more conversions, don't get me wrong, some of these things will give you more conversions, but at an increased cost. If your business cannot tolerate that increased cost, don't 
do it. Up next, this is a very interesting change, and that is that ads are going to start showing in AI overviews on Google Search. We always knew this was going to happen. How else can Google monetize the multi-billion dollar spend they've put into AI overviews to get more money back? The only way to do this is through advertising. ChatGPT has a problem because they have subscriptions only. That's barely going to cover their costs. Eventually, they will go into advertising as well, but it seems Google, as the, I guess, the biggest digital advertising platform in the world, has started first. They are going to put ads into their AI overviews, starting with search on desktop. You will see the ad units are basically the same as what you'd expect to see on a normal search result, you know, shopping ads and text ads for search as well. This is what's going to show in the AI overviews as well. But there are some unanswered questions that I think Google really needs to answer here. Firstly, how is Google going to match an ad to a search term that generated an AI overview? Because when you think about it, when you're running a search campaign, you are focused on very specific commercial, high, high commercial intent keywords. Now, an AI overview isn't going to come up for a specific high intent keyword. If I typed in plumber in London, it doesn't need an AI overview because there's nothing to explain. So if Google is going to start showing my plumbing campaign to people in AI overviews, maybe it would show for a term like what to do when I notice a wet spot on my ceiling. Then maybe a plumbing ad shows up. But in reality, I don't know if I want to spend money on that term. It's very discovery based. It's very kind of non-commercial intent. I'd rather if they went to Google and typed in plumber in London, my ad showed up as opposed to this kind of expanded AI overview based search. So that's my first concern. How is Google going to match your ads to these much longer tail terms? And secondly, you can imagine what my second concern is based on what I've just said. And that is, of course, is Google going to give us the opportunity to see how much of our spend has gone on to AI overview results? Are they going to give us the search terms for AI overview results? We don't know this. We don't know whether or not they're going to give us this. The nature of how Google is right now, they probably won't. They don't even give us our actual search terms in a normal search campaign. And they cite privacy as the reason. I can't imagine they will give us these kinds of search terms for AI overviews as well. It's going to be a problem. I can see this being the next big scandal in the world of Google ads and advertisers when you can't see your spend. We've already talked about search terms being hidden. This will be the next one. Can we see the AI overview data? Probably not. That is a big concern. Still loads of unanswered questions. Google is not answering them. They didn't answer them at Google Marketing Live. So we just have to wait and see and hope that we can find some workarounds if needed and we're not seeing good results from these areas. Another interesting update for you, Google is going to start offering an AI agent within the Google Ads interface. For those who don't know what an AI agent is, it is essentially like a digital butler. You can plug this digital AI butler into all of your systems, ask it to do tasks, it will learn how to do tasks, it will do them for you, and it will basically learn from the data it's seeing and work in a way that is autonomous and completes tasks based on prompts that you give it and instructions that you give it and an objective that it has. So it's a way of automating like a human running a Google Ads campaign would do using AI. That is what an AI agent is. But how would it work for Google Ads specifically? Well, in this example, I'm actually going to show you the video from the Google Marketing Live event because it's really interesting watching the example they gave. Let's take a look. Well, you may have heard about AI agents. I want to give you a sneak peek of the Google Ads AI agent. Now, this is super exciting. What does it do? I will show you, but know first that for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to pretend that I own a chocolate company and I want to improve my conversion rate. Uh, please make me head of tasting. Okay, right, take it away, please. <laughs> so let's first load up the agent. Hi, Stephanie. I see that you have started a new summer sales campaign for your Chocolate Voyage website. How can I help you today? Well, hi, AI agent. I'm seeing website traffic from my campaign, but no conversions. What's going on? OK, let's take a look at your website. I've confirmed that you have set your summer sale campaign to direct traffic to this page. However, I could not identify a Google tag on your website. This means purchases happening here are not reflected in your Google Ads account. Would you like me to help you fix this now? <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> I'm really glad that you caught this. Yes, please, do fix it. I see that you're using Wix for your website. So first, let me find your Google Tag ID, and then I can install it for you directly within your Wix dashboard. Okay, now that I have your Google Tag ID, 
let's install the tag on your website. So you can see now that it's searching for my tag, implementing, and now my campaign is properly set up. I'll ask it when I'll see conversions, and it tells me when those conversions will come through. And it goes on to give more sophisticated recommendations to help with conversion rate overall. Pretty helpful, huh? So the example they gave was for self-build websites like Wix or Squarespace where it could go in and set up conversion tracking. Now I'd imagine for this to happen, you'd have to, you'd have to give the agent access to your accounts for these, for these platforms, which isn't a problem. Actually, I think the example they showed is pretty good because a lot of small businesses don't have you know, self-build, self-developed big websites. They often use these platforms. And if Google can help them get conversion tracking set up for these websites, then great. If they can automatically track conversions for form submissions, for example, or if it can find the phone number on the website and do the Google um, conversion tracking for call, call tracking, then that would work really well. And I think this is a very good example of where AI can do a lot of good for small businesses. So with a problem like conversion tracking, it's either right and set up or it isn't. It's a very binary thing. Now, of course, there can be issues with conversion tracking, but the assumption is it's either, it's either set up correctly or it isn't set up correctly. And with a problem like that, where there's a very specific outcome of yes or no, it's very binary, I think an AI agent can be very, very good. Now here is where I think the problem is. What about nuanced problems like looking at Google Ads account data and deciding what to do to optimize performance of campaigns? That is what humans are currently doing, humans like me, um, and humans like you probably watching this video. Now, of course, as you know, looking into the data, making decisions on a campaign is multifaceted. It's based not just on the isolated data in the account, it's also based on the business's goals, the business's ambitions, the business's trends, seasonality, product importance. There's so many factors outside of the interface that come into making decisions within the interface. Now, this AI agent isn't going to know those factors. It's not going to understand the nuances. And of course, because it's Google's AI agent, what if it acts like a Google rep? What if it just wants you to use all the automations, use, use everything in the account that a typical Google rep will tell you to use, even when it's detrimental to your business? What if it becomes a sales agent for Google to increase its numbers? That's not impossible. In fact, I think it's quite probable. So I think we need to watch very carefully what happens with this AI agent for Google Ads, because ultimately I think it will have a two-pronged attack approach. It will help you do the fundamentals, set up conversion tracking, and the kind of binary things in the account which are good, but it will also come with a bunch of problems, I think, with pushing revenue up for Google and using features that are probably not necessary for a lot of advertisers. But let's keep an eye on this one. Now, the final thing I want to talk about is AI Max for Search, which was announced some weeks ago, but Google talked about it at their Google Marketing Live event again. And I thought I'd wait until this event to kind of get more of an understanding as to how Google sees this type of option. So as a top level explanation as to what AI Max is, it is a one click option when building a search campaign that will allow Google to use AI and it's in its algorithm to bid more beyond the keywords just in your account. It will try and look for more phrases beyond what you're currently bidding on and beyond what you can currently get where there could be more conversions. So basically it means your, your search campaign becomes way more wide ranging in order to hunt for more conversions. So when you think about a keyword in your account, you're obviously bidding towards that keyword. Google will use close variants when looking at that keyword, but with AI Max for search, it's going to go way beyond just the queries in your account and the queries you're currently generating where there could be sales possible. Now, there's a couple of questions I have with this functionality. Firstly, if you're running a search campaign on, for example, exact match or phrase match, I can understand what this option will specifically do because you're moving basically to go beyond just the keywords and queries generated from your exact match and phrase match keywords, kind of forcing your campaign to go more down the broad match route. So turning this option on for that kind of campaign as a bridge towards maybe going to broad match kind of makes sense. But what about for those already on broad match? The question that's unanswered is what is the fundamental difference between running a Google Ads search campaign on broad match where Google will go way beyond the remit of that keyword anyway, where there could be potential sales, using an algorithm, by the way, that Google themselves say is AI powered. Using broad match with smart bidding creates an AI powered bidding algorithm. Google says this in their own documentation. So what does search, for, what does search max um, do in this situation? because you're already an AI-based campaign, you're already broad, so the question then becomes, what is the fundamental difference? So Search Engine Land actually did kind of a breakdown as to how they think this would match queries differently to what's currently going on in Google Ads. So let's take a look at that example and see 
whether or not it makes sense. Imagine you own an apparel brand and want to promote a new summer line. If someone searches for colourful midi dress for spring and summer, your campaign with only exact match keywords like red midi dress would have missed them. And even if you had it as a broad match keyword, AI Max can ensure your ad stays relevant by intelligently adapting your ad content to match the search query. So actually, looking at that example from search engine land, it does seem like there are some differences between a standard broad match campaign and AI Max for search in terms of how it manipulates the creative. Now, whether or not it writes a good ad based on that exact search term around summer and spring midi dresses, then I think that's the question that needs to be answered. But overall, if it can do that, that is great. And I think that's a good functionality to improve click-through rates. But in terms of incremental queries and actually getting more queries out there, that term for midi dresses for summer, that would show for a broad match keyword for midi dresses. It would. Google will use broad matching to see if it can reach those queries, like those longer tail seasonal queries. That, that would not be a shock to appear in a search terms report if running on broad match. That's the difference I'm trying to find out here. Is it truly incremental? It is if you're an exact match advertiser, as, as that example showed. If you're on exact match, then yes, it can be seen as an increment, though you could just use broad match keywords. So I still don't specifically know what the incremental sales advantage is in terms of visibility. There are some creative advantages, as you saw there in that example. They could write a better ad based on the fact of, the, of that query being different to the ads you've written in your account. So it doesn't seem like a huge advantage for those on broad match, but for those on exact, not willing to go to the broad match route, it could be a one-click option you could test, and you could one-click option it off if it wasn't working, as opposed to launching a full-on broad match campaign. So again, I see this as a bridge between kind of the world we are in and the future of Google Ads, which is where potentially things could become keywordless. More on that in a future video. But overall, I think it's an interesting update. And again, it's an opt-in. You don't have to use it regardless of what Google reps say until the interface actually changes and forces you to use anything use the features and functionalities best for your campaigns. That's it. And staying on the subject of things you still have access to within the interface, the Auction Insights report is one of them. But I reckon you're probably using it wrong. If you want to find out the right way to use the Auction Insights report, click the video showing on screen right now where I break it down for you.